new boardwalks on Sullivan's Island to getting prepared for never busy summer season? I talk one-on-one -on -one with Sullivan's Island Mayor Pat O'Neill for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Sullivan's Island Mayor Pat O'Neill. Welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thanks, Quentin. It's great to be back. Well, I appreciate it greatly. Obviously, we just began the year 2023. So what is the state right now of the town of Sullivan's Island? I think we're in pretty good shape. I think we're in pretty good shape. We uh, have completed several big, important projects recently. Um, we completed the nearly complete, uh, nearly 100% reconstruction of the fire station with additions to it, as well as a sizable warehouse, or not warehouse, but garage and maintenance building that we desperately needed to uh, protect our equipment. Uh, so that's all been completed within the last few months. Uh, we're wrapping up uh, construction of four new long boardwalks to the beach. Uh, these were repl replacing existing boardwalks that had uh, aged and rotted in some cases. And, you know, in most cases, since our beach is accreting, the new boardwalks had to be significantly longer than the ones they were replacing. I mean, that's a good problem to have. It means sure. we're not having uh, erosion over the vast majority of that land. Right. Uh, so that's good. Uh, budget season is beginning. Uh, we are um, about to start our you know early, early draft of the budget for the next fiscal year, which begins July 1. Um, overall, last beach season, I think we, um, we had a pretty successful beach season in the sense of uh, I think the crowds and traffic were fairly manageable, given that, you know, there are more people living in the area every summer and no more beach uh, to hold them. Uh, but, you know, we worked in, in partnership with uh, the Isle of Palms and yes. Folly Beach and Mount Pleasant um, and Channel 4 yes. uh, last year with a campaign that Channel 4 put out called Know Before You Go. Uh, really encouraging people to, before they leave home to go to the beach, check the conditions at the beach they, they are intending to go to. Check the traffic conditions on the way. Uh, and, you know, don't get, don't get surprised after you drive an hour and then you get, wind up getting stuck in traffic for an hour. Uh, Cause I always say, you know, not everybody can go to the beach on the same day. <laughs> So, you know, there may be some days when you decide, well, I think I'll take in a movie uh, or, or I'll go to some other recreational facility. Uh, we, you know, we, we are delighted to have our visitors come here and we want them all to have a positive experience. Uh, and positive experience does not include getting stuck in traffic. Yes, sir. So when you look back at 2022, how many visitors visited town, the town of Sullivan's Island? Uh, I don't have a count on that. You know, we get... Uh, periodically, we get traffic counts from the Department of Transportation. I haven't looked at those recently. What um, would the, yeah. What would the traffic counts say in 2021 when people were just now coming back out of COVID? You know, all that is, at this point is almost a blur to me. But uh, uh, I think, I know last year was sort of people were catching up for lost beach time. That's for sure. As they were doing it, just about all the recreational venues. Mm. Now, Earlier, you talked about obviously the additions to the new fire house, I mean, the fire station that is, which I believe is right next to Town Hall, right? Right, right. And I was just there a couple of weeks ago. So tell me what additions were made to that? Well, the, uh, the original fire station there was built just a couple of years after Hugo. Uh, so I think it was built in around 1991. Mm. Um, and at the time, we typically only had one firefighter at a time on a shift. And of course, with requirements increasing over the years, uh, we were, we're currently at three firefighters per shift. Uh, so obviously you need to have more room for more people. Uh, and remember, you know, if it's a nighttime shift, they're, they're going to be catching up and catching some sleep during that time. Uh, as is the case with all firemen, firefighters. Um, and, uh, of course, we've also had our, a uh, really valuable volunteer fire and rescue squad that utilizes that facility as well. Um, and we've had, you know, more equipment that we've had to get. Uh, we are assuming that it won't be long before the federal regulations force us to have four 
firefighters per shift. So, you know, we had to plan for that. Uh, the building had not held up well in some cases. We had a lot of water infiltration with rot. And, you know, it's one of those things that started out that, well, we had rot, rot around the windows. Let's replace the windows. And then you start looking around and you've got more rot elsewhere. And you get to a point where you say, you know, there's no point in doing this halfway. So we were able, fortunately, the bones of the building, the metal, the steel work, uh, were in very good shape. So we were able to preserve the skeleton, add on a little bit. Uh, and now we've got a really nice facility that's worthy of our firefighters and volunteers. So what is the plan to add that fourth firefighter right now? Uh, we don't have a specific plan now, but we actually are going to be talking about this uh, at our next council workshop meeting as we begin to address budgetary issues. You know what? As a matter of fact, Mayor, I want to talk to you that, about that because what are the current revenue trends right now for the town of Sullivan's Island? The revenue? Yes, sir. Uh, we're, we're in very healthy shape. I'm, I'm delighted to be able to say that. Um, we Most of our revenues have actually come in above projections for the current fiscal year that we're in. Um, you know, it's a sign of a healthy, what has been a healthy economy uh, and a vibrant community. Um, the business permit revenue is up. Building permits are up. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing well. And we try to be conservative in our budgeting. Uh, we don't want to assume getting too much ahead of ourselves with revenue because you never know when you'll get a nasty surprise. And one of the things we've done uh, just recently, <coughs> excuse me, is, um, you know, we've always maintained very, very healthy reserves, financial reserves. But what we've done recently is begin to carve up those reserves into a few designated sub accounts, if you will, and, and continue to nourish those reserves. And that was to anticipate expected expenses, longer term capital type expenses in the future that you can always expect to have. So for example, you know, maintenance on town hall, maintenance even on the new fire station. Right. Uh, how often do you have to replace your HVAC units for a large building like that. You know, how long can you expect them to last in a salt air environment? Um, how often do you have to get the buildings painted? How often do you have to replace fire trucks? So, and, and, and some other, you know, significant capital uh, improvements or projects like that. So we've started to dedicate portions of our reserves to specific items like that to make certain that we're going to fund them properly without having to go into debt. Hopefully, we'll have enough time to accumulate what we need for each of those. And what uh, time? I try to add a little bit to that every year. We've set some targets for each one. I can't remember the numbers now. Uh, and then the current target is to not only stay at that level, you know, to make up for what we have to withdraw from it to, to use for the designated purpose, but also anticipate some in, in, inflation and uh, and, and you know, recognize the ongoing inflation. So, so, to, uh, so Mayor, what do you have to rip, withdraw from right now? Uh, nothing right now. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, 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 think, uh, um, no, I don't think we've got any of these. We just established them a couple of months ago. Okay, cool. We haven't had time to spend them, <laughs> and I hope uh, we don't need to spend them too soon. But, right. You know, uh, uh, things you know you're going to have to spend money on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how many sub, say for instance, theoretically, how many sub accounts do you all have in total? Oh, uh, I should know that, but I don't. I'm going to guess five and don't ask me to name them all. <laughs> I mean, one is a maintenance <laughs> town hall and station, one's new fire trucks. Yes. Um, <laughs> one, I think, may well be boardwalk repairs. Right. Going yeah. So, so, and I've been on many of those boardwalks plenty of times in the past couple of weeks, but how many boardwalks need to be actually repaired right now? Uh, well, I think we've got a, a kind of longer term plan where we, you know, a couple of years ago, we identified the ones that need replacing. We prioritized them. And I think we figured out we were able to afford to do four of them this fiscal year. So we've done them. I can't remember what the next ones sure. up are. Um, but we've, we've got some beautiful new boardwalks at uh, Station 18, Station 19, oh, yes. 
Station 27, which is a real beauty. That one goes over some wetlands. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm going to talk to you about the wetlands in just a minute. But uh, overall, how much are these boardwalks repairs costing the, the town? I don't have the number in mind. I keep forgetting I need to bring my budget numbers with me when you and I talk. Um, okay. You know, we got we had some funding from, um, I think, a little funding from the county Greenbelt money. Right, right. Um, and things like that, but then we also fund a lot of it ourselves. And you know, I, I I don't think people in the general Charleston area or any visitors, for that matter, recognize the uh, amount of money that the town spends every year uh, for the benefit of our visitors. Which I mean, we're happy to be able to do it. Right. But you know, we we can attribute a certain percentage of our police and public safety and fire and rescue expenditures to the fact that our population triples on, on pleasant weather weekends, uh, warm weather weekends, which is getting to be most of them. Yes, now. <laughs> so, you know, we've got more expenses for all of those things, wow. in addition to what we do to, you know, make sure we have safe boardwalks for everybody to use. Oh, yes, absolutely. I've been traveling down those recently as well. But let me ask you, so uh, how much is this, the town actually spending on these boardwalk repairs and how much is actually coming from the Charleston County Greenbelt money? I don't have those numbers with me. Now, going back, obviously, to the maintenance of Town Hall, what needs to be repaired right now inside there? Nothing inside right now, but we know, you know, paint gets exposed to the elements. Yes, We've yes. done some, a little, some repainting recently, actually. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, it wasn't a wholesale job. Right. Uh, I mean, not the whole thing. Uh, we've had a few uh, some issues with some rotted boards on the outside porches yeah. uh, in a couple of instances. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you know, I mean, in general, it's held up quite well. It served us very well. Yes, yes, yes. And I love sitting outside in the park next door. Yeah. Speaking of which, what is the status of that? Uh, we are in negotiations with an engineering firm to, um, if, if we can get the negotiations finished, uh, to retain them to. Uh, draw up a master plan for Stiff Park, uh, and the you know the project or the request for proposals that we put out uh, specified that we want a lot of community input to this. So it, it will be an ongoing process with several community meetings and some first and second drafts of plans. Um, but first, you know, first we have to get the engineering firm contract, and then we can proceed with that. Uh, and we want that to give us a, you know, kind of give us a roadmap toward uh, a park that will not only continue to be nice, but maybe even have some improvements. Um, yes. You know, because as far as things you can expect to change, you know, playground equipment is not going to last forever. Right. Uh, you know, the tastes and expectations for what should be in parks changes over the years that people have. So looking forward to that starting to uh, take place. Oh, yes, and uh, I'll be back over there soon. But let me ask you, when do you expect these negotiations to actually take place once you find this engineering firm? Well, we've got our lawyers and their lawyers talking right now, trying to iron out a couple of last-minute details. Hopefully, not last-minute, a couple of lingering details. What are those lingering details? Uh, that's contractual discussion, so I can't okay. go into that. And, okay, well then, what is ideally the town's master plan for this park? Well, that's what we're trying to buy. Mm. So we're, we're trying to pay experts to help us, help develop our vision, help us develop our vision mm. of what the park should be like. Now, I know a lot of the kids hang out there after school all the time when I'm out there, and it's, it's a busy park, yeah. fall, spring, it's summer. It's not like it's not getting used. Yeah, it's getting used a whole lot there. I can tell you that. But let me ask you, when do you expect the community input to take place here with that? Well, that, you know, there'll be a timeline once we have the contract struck. Mm. Uh, once the deal is struck, I should say. So once so the deal that all, everything will depend on when that contract gets executed. Mm. And, and I, and I hate to be redundant, but once that's getting done, got done, actually, gets done, I should say, when do you expect the first and drafts, first and second drafts to take place? Uh, that will be a number of months in the future because first they need to do the, there's a lot of engineering that needs doing as far as drainage, for example. Mm. Uh, what the terrain is like. Yes. Uh, they'll need to have uh, one or more community input sessions where we 
and probably maybe involving surveys as well as that uh, to find out what our residents would like to see the park become, you know, as it evolves. What does Mayor Patrick O'Neill wants the park to, to develop into? I would like it to be something that retains the same sort of informal small town feel uh, that it's had for the period of its existence. Um, Pat, Mayor O'Neill's Pat O'Neill's preference is to leave the mound pretty oh, yes. much like it is, or at least available for cardboard sledding, <laughs> uh, which is, um, has been a tradition on the island for generations. Um, and so, but we'll, we'll see what comes out of all the meetings and everything else. But I, I want to see it continue to be used and to be used by, you know, everybody and all, all different elements of the community, you know, as well as some of our visitors. Right. Absolutely. So, okay. And I know I'm going way ahead of myself there, but typically speaking, how much would the new playground equipment cost the town? I uh, can't tell you that. I mean, I'm not trying to be evasive, but it sure, depends sure, sure. on what the equipment is. Mm. Um, mm. You know, the days of hanging an old an old tire from a tree are gone. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, so <laughs> oh, okay. I, I I know I'm going to add myself again, but what type of playground equipment would be ideal for the future of the town? Again, that's going to come out of this planning process. <laughs> we're, we're not going into it with. You know any real fixed notions about okay. specific things like sure. that? Sure. Sure. I mean, and I'm I, I don't know much about the you know the current field of playground design, playground yes, equipment design, um, and so that's why we have the engineering firm. And it's not just engineering; they have to have somebody with experience in designing playgrounds. You know, A anybody local for that? Uh, again, it will depend on the company that we do the do the contract with. Have the bids going out for that? Well, we 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 put out the request for proposals, or actually, a, maybe request for qualifications. At any rate, we identified uh, the the firm that we want to try to do business with. We're trying to negotiate the contract with them now, wow. and so the the talent that gets brought in for this project will depend on the firm that does the master plan. And that will depend on how we proceed with the contra contracting. Now, going forward, Mayor, when do you expect this new park to actually open to the public? What? <laughs> when when do you, do you anticipate that this new park will come alive and be actually open to the public in the future? Well, I, I don't mean to misrepresent what we're trying to do. Sure, I sure. don't necessarily think that we'll go from overnight Right. And we fell swoop from what we got to whatever we're going to have. Uh, that's the reason for getting the master plan. Like I said, it's a, a roadmap into the future for the park. Yes, sir. So, you know, we'll, it'll identify hopefully what aspects of it most need upfitting or replacing. Mm. The community sessions should identify the community's priorities, the things that they most want to see that they don't have now or see more of or less of that they have now. Yeah, but we'll need to, you know, do some prioritization of the projects and then we can start implementing that. I don't see it as something that'll happen uh, again in, in, in one fell swoop. Now, I know this might be unrelated, but what are the community priorities and needs right now? You mean about the playground? Yes, that, sir. That's why we're hiring these people to do the study. Okay. Okay. We want and to probe, probe and survey to elicit the town's residents' uh, priorities. And going from the park over to town hall, over to the fire station again, let me ask you, uh, how many of those fire trucks actually need to be replaced or repaired right now? None of them right now. We're in good shape right now. Okay. That's great to but, hear. You know, we're we're put, socking the money away so that we can stay in good shape and so that when the time comes that we have to replace one or another truck to be in good shape then, that we'll have the money we need. So how much money do you have now, just in case something like this happens in the future? Well, I don't have those numbers in front of me. We just established the separate sub-accounts, and again, I don't have those numbers. Oh, no worries. And, Mayor, going back, obviously, to, you know, what you were talking about earlier, and this is going to be something that's going to be big in July, which was, is the town's budget. Do you know what the projections are so far for 2023? 
you know, we'll be looking at the staff's first draft of a budget proposal uh, at our workshop uh, this coming week. Okay. Now, overall, when you look at the town of Sullivan's Island, how do you currently accommodate Sullivan's Island, the Sullivan's Island community in an environmentally but physically sustainable manner? Uh, tell me more about what you're asking about here. Yeah, how do you currently accommodate the community's needs in an environmentally and physically sustainable manner? Well, we, um, I mean, we do our budgeting. Yes, sir. Uh, and, you know, for the services, the personnel, the items, the equipment that we need, uh, we figure out how much that's going to all cost. And then we look to see if we will have likely enough revenue for that. And then if we don't, then we say, well, maybe we need to take this, this, and this off the list, uh, like, like anybody does individually with their own yeah. budget. Yes, sir. Um, and so, you know, we're fortunate enough that we've got uh, a, a really good tax base here. It's, we don't get much money from accommodations taxes because we don't have very many short-term rental properties. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the other beach communities um, have lots more short-term rentals, and they get quite a bit of revenue hmm. from accommodations taxes. Wow. The town of Sullivan's Island, more than 20 years ago, made it the decision that we would we were willing to forego that revenue in exchange for the what we think is an improved quality of life, quality of community life uh, that you have by not being overrun with vacation rentals. Was it a mistake? No. Looking back? No. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. People back then um we had some folks opposed to what we were doing. I was on the planning commission then right. before I was on the council. Um, but we had, you know, some people saying you're going to destroy property values. Mm -hmm. And um, if we were trying to destroy property values back then, we did a terrible job because they've not, done nothing but climb ever since then. So uh, and I'm pretty sure the rate of the rate of increase in property values here has grown faster than the comparable rates on other nearby beach communities. And so I think part of it is that people see this as a residential community. I mean, nothing against visitors, don't get right, me right, 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 right. Uh, and when we did this, we had provisions where the legally existing short-term rental properties at the time could continue uh, to stay legal and get you know a short-term rental license every year by following the procedures. Um, but um, if we had an instance. Um, recent within the last um, year uh, where there was a company that's in the business of buying up properties in destinations or very nice areas uh, and then having them bought by an LLC that they form, a limited liability corporation. And then they, they sell shares in that LLC and then handle booking of the stays uh, in the property among the so-called owners. Um, and uh, you've probably seen a lot of the signs out on the street yes, opposing sir. that company. Yes, I'm sir. not going to name the company. Right, right. Um, but it, it took a while to do it right. But our zoning administrator uh, sent them a cease and desist letter, uh, which they appealed to the, our Board of Zoning Appeals uh, a couple of weeks ago at a meeting, and the Board of Zoning Appeals upheld the zoning administrator unanimously. So we don't know what the company will do next. But, uh, so, I mean, that was an, as an example of the how much the community values the lack of short-term rentals. Uh, that, that was a great example of it. And, and I saw a lot of those signs going up and down Jasper Boulevard just a couple of weeks ago opposing that. So, in your mind, Mayor, why do they want to choose Sullivan's Island for timeshares? Yeah, that's a desirable um, real estate location, I think. Right. Uh, they and they see it as a people. People want to be here. If you look at the increases in the real estate prices, which are astronomical, um, then you know that's an indicator that people want to be here, and they figure there'd be a market for their shares. I guess. So, in on Sullivan's Island, <laughs> and it's probably uh, uh, well documented. But what are the real estate prices right now there? Hot. What's your definition of hot? <laughs> multi-millions oh wow yeah multi of course yeah 
and, oh, yeah. and I, yeah, and I would love to talk to you more about this, but Zoom has only given me 10 minutes, and I want to get to the next, uh, obviously, to hot topic that's on the and island by right the now. way i've only got about five minutes left unfortunately so. oh yeah no worries but i want to get to you I, my to... phone's a little frozen but i had mm -hmm. the questions but let me um let's see oh god let's see but let me ask you this mayor what is the current tax base right now on this town in the town cell of his island if you're asking for the numbers I, I, again i don't have any numbers like that uh in my head right now yes uh, sir and um you know, I mean, we've got them in all of our records and we deal with them and we deal with them, but it's not information I typically retain. Okay. Uh, my tongue. Oh, no worries. But, uh, and, and obviously since you, you have five, five minutes left and my phone, phone is frozen, I would like uh -oh. to get, yeah, get you back on Quintus close up so that we can talk about the maritime for us. But for sure. now, uh, Sullivan's Island mayor, Pat O'Neill, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quintus close ups. Thank you very much. Good being here, Quentin. Likewise.